Hey, this is Sam from Sure. In this video tutorial, I'll talk about frequency markers, the uh, tool that you can use to view coordinated frequencies in the Frequency Coordination tab of Wireless Workbench. Wireless Workbench has a lot of tools in the Frequency Coordination tab. It enables you to input a ton of RF information about your environment, as well as a lot of different types of systems to find compatible frequencies for your entire wireless rig. Now today, what I want to do is I want to find frequencies for just four of my Axiant digital channels here. I promise you I'm not addicted to pastel Easter colors. This is just a nice way to uh, uh, bling things out and make uh, channels differentiable. But each of my channels, uh, I've given a color and I want to bring those systems into the frequency coordination tab and show you the ways that Wireless Workbench portrays those frequencies as a part of frequency coordination. So I'm going to select my frequencies from the inventory and uh, there go my channels. You can see them. They don't have any frequencies yet because I've assigned them. Uh, I've just added them as virtual devices. But what I want to do is go through a couple different phases of the calculator to show you the different styles of markers that Workbench will show. And I think this will just give you a little bit more information about um, the user interface that Workbench presents. So when I calculate these frequencies, you'll notice that um, you know there's no scan data or anything I've loaded. So the frequencies are just placed somewhere where they're compatible with one another. And these markers show up as green. They're green markers with these right pointing triangles on the side. And I just want to decode each of the aspects of these markers because each part of it means something. So first things first, uh, the flag, the right pointing marker, indicates that these frequencies are um, frequency requests that are not locked, meaning that every time I calculate, these frequencies could change a different time. So if I calculate again, uh, oh, my, my zooming scale, but my frequencies jumped around to a different position. Now, I say that they're going to change every time I calculate because these frequencies aren't locked. Well, what does lock mean? If I really want some of these frequencies to stay put, I can use these locks in the coordination workspace to actually lock down those frequencies. And you'll notice the marker headers change from right pointing triangles to downward pointing triangles. Now, you'll notice in subsequent calculations, uh, the two locked frequencies stay put and the unlocked frequencies jump all around. Now there's any number of use cases why users would want to lock frequencies. Um, probably one of the easiest reasons is I don't want to have to resync all my transmitters or packs and that frequency worked well for me yesterday. Let's keep it uh, just where it is. So that's what the marker header means, a right pointing or a downward pointing triangle, whether the frequency is locked and will change or not uh, in subsequent calculations. Now what about this color? This green color signifies that these frequencies are compatible. Um, if I scroll down here on this right sidebar, there is a um, color markers by option. And right now, the uh, thing that's displayed is by compatibility, meaning when channels are compatible, or in this, you, you know, it's also listed here in this analysis results column, when the frequencies are compatible, they'll be shown as green. And when they're incompatible, they'll be shown as red. Let me prove that to you. So I'll go ahead and exclude a TV station that my, one of my frequencies happens to be sitting right inside, which will definitely render it incompatible. Um, now I can recalculate things, uh, and this guy won't move because he's locked, but I'll just analyze these frequencies to show you how compatible they all are at the present moment. And you'll notice my other three frequencies, they remain compatible, but this poor frequency stuck inside a DTV station is red now because he's incompatible. This is just to display for you how the color of markers reflects the uh, channel's compatibility, which is also represented down here in the, uh, in the workspace list. Now, another option here I could choose is channel color. And when I choose channel color, you'll notice the color of these markers corresponds to the color of each of these channels, uh, the colors that they were when I imported them into the frequency coordination tab, which is also shown here um, in the inventory as well. Now, uh, this doesn't give me as much review of compatibility, but if for whatever reason um, I want to see where my money talent is, and I know my money talent is this yellow marker here, this gives me a lot more visibility as frequencies are calculated uh, where I can find the channel I'm looking for. So this is a little bit more insight into uh, how we style frequency markers, what their, um, what their style and their layout means, and how to configure the colors of them in the frequency coordination tab of Wireless Workbench.